Yo, welcome to my Clit Math YouTube channel where I'm devoted in BD student to zero tolerance for the fear of mathematics. This is going to be an interesting video for every student preparing for GPEP mathematics examination this year. I'm going to be solving the 2020 mathematics GPEP questions. The section A precisely. The section B has been solved by Prestomat Adido in Jerry Springer. I'll put the link to the videos in the description box below. You see, you don't just learn by watching, you need to get your pen and paper and walk along with me. Now before I go ahead, help us to share this video to your class group chats. There are a lot of students out there that this is exactly what they just need for them to pass this course. Also don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that. So without further ado, let's head over to our video for today. In this question, it said for what values of k with the equation y square minus open bracket k minus 2 close bracket y plus 1 to be equals to minus 2k half equal root. Now you recall that the general form of a quadratic equation with variable y can be written as a y square plus p y plus c to be equals to zero. Now if I try to rewrite my given equation to be of this form, that is I'm going to have this to be I'm going to have this to be y square minus k minus 2y then we have this to be plus 1 then if I bring minus 2k to the other side that means I'm going to have this to be what plus 2k to be equals to 0 now if you should compare you will notice that my a here is 1 my b here is what minus 2k minus open bracket k minus 2 and my c is what 1 plus 2k all right so that's clear enough now you recall that for this quadratic equation to have equal root, that means that my discriminant must be equal to zero, or you can just say that my b square must be equal to what four ac. All right, that is for this quadratic equation to have equal root, then b square must be equal to four ac. Now, if I apply the same principle here in this given equation here, what we are saying is that my b square, which is what minus which is minus open bracket k minus 2 all right if i square it okay must be equal to 4 times a which is what 1 times c what's my c my c is what 1 plus 2k all right so i can now just solve this and if i square this this is going to give me what k minus 2 all square because there's minus here and if you square minus that's that will, that will be positive so meaning that i'm going to have this to be k square minus 4k plus 4 to be equals to now if i use 4 to open this bracket i'm going to have this to be 4 plus 8k the rest is just algebra i can just simplify this so that means i'm going to have this to be this will take care of itself then that means i will have this to be what k square minus 12k to be equals to zero and if i factorize k that means i'm going to have this to be what k open bracket k minus 12 to be equal to zero meaning that my k is zero or i have k to be what 12. now from your option listed below what is the correct option the correct option here is what option a so let's move on to the next question in this question they say which of the following is correct here we are given degree and radian now let me just quickly really try to refresh your mind about degree and radian now let's say we have a circle. All right. And let's say I have the center here and I have this to be my radius. If I wish to subtend an arc in which the length is the same thing as my radius, all right? So the length of this arc is my radius. The angle subtend here is what is 1 radian. The angle Substantive here is what is one radian. It's known as radian, meaning that anytime you have the length of my arc to be the same thing as the length of the radius, that means the angle substantive here is just what one radian. Radian is just another form of measuring an angle. Okay. Now let's call this point O and let's call this point A and let's call this point B. Now let's try to create a proportion between the length of a circle and the angle in a circle 
okay all right so meaning that the length of arc a b length of arc a b divided by the circumference of the circle circle must be equal to what must be equal to this portion here because we are trying to take a portion out of this circle so meaning that this would be one radian the angle here is what one radian all divided by now which other way are we comparing we are comparing it to what 360 because the total angle in, in a circle is what 360 degree now what is the length of this arc here the length of this arc here is what radius that's r okay and what is the circumference of our circle the circumference of our circle is what 2 pi r okay so meaning that we have this to be what one radian over 360 degree okay so that means this will cancel out this then that means we are going to have this to be 2 pi radian because if we cross multiply 2 pi we multiply 1 radian that means we have this to be what 2 pi radian to be equals to what 360 degree so meaning that 2 pi radian all right 2 pi rad radian is just another way of measuring your your circle so meaning that we can write this as pi rad to be equals to what 180 degree so I, I hope that is clear enough and now in the option listed below if I multiply this by let's say I multiply this by 2 so that means 2 pi rad will be what 2 times 180 degree which is what 360 degree and 3 pi rad will be what 540 degree then 4 pi rad would be what 720 degree just by multiplying this by any scalar factor k we change this also so meaning that the correct option to this question is what option option d so let's move on to the next question in this question it said given that a and b are subset of the universal set which of the following is true okay in this question it said a is a subset of u as universal set and b is also a subset of the universal set all right now by the Morgan's theorem a union b complement okay is actually equals to a intersection a complement intersection b complement okay now let me see if i can just prove this, this to you guys okay now let's say x is an arbitrary element if x is an arbitrary element in a union b complement okay so that means that x belonging to a union b complement implies that what x must not belong to what x does not belong to a union b okay just like the, the, from your definition of complement if x does not belong to a set if x does not belong to a what we are saying is that if x belongs to a complement rather so this implies that what you are trying to pick an element x which belongs to your universal set such that x does not belong to what to your set a okay so that's just like the definition of complement of a set now let's come back here if x belongs to a union b complement that implies that what x does not belong to a union b and if x does not belong to a union b what we are saying is that x does not belong to a and x does not belong to what to, does not belong to b okay now note this critical step if x does not belong to a union b that means that what x does not belong to a and x does not belong to what b so likewise if x does not belong to a intersection b that means that what x does not x does not belong to a or x does not belong to b okay so you have to note that step also so if x does not belong to a that means that x belongs to a complement and x belongs to what b complement so if you have x belonging to a complement that means that's what we have a complement intersection b complement so meaning that x belongs to what x belongs to a complement intersection b complement in summary we can now see that so if you have we are starting with x belonging to a union b complement and we are adding with x belong to a 
complement in partition B complement. That means that A union B complement is a subset of what A complement in partition B complement. Now the idea behind this is that I can reverse this implication sign rather. And if I reverse this implication sign, I'm going to have this to be what A union B complement to be equal to what A complement in partition B complement because I'm going to find out that A complement in partition B complement will also be a subset of A union B complement and you know that if A is a subset of B and B is also a subset of A that means that what A is equal to what B so I think this is what this is true and I think that you can also prove that if I have A in partition B complement to be equal to A complement union B complement. I, I think you can also prove this by just picking an arbitrary element to be a member of A intersection B complement, which implies that what that Y must not belong to what A intersection B. And if Y is not a member of A intersection B, that implies that what Y does not belong to A or Y does not belong to B. So you have to take this take note of this step. And if Y does not belong to A, that means that what Y is a member of A complement or you have Y to be a member of what B complement. Alright? So and here we are going to have this to be we're having this to be what Y is now belonging to A complement union B complement. So we are starting with Y belonging to A intersection B complement and we are ending with what Y belonging to A complement union B complement. That means that what A intersection B complement must be a subset of what A complement union B complement. Okay? And if I try to revise this this implication sign, alright, I'm going to find out that what A complement union B complement is a subset of A intersection B complement. So that means in summary, I'm going to have this to be to be true. So if you check part of your option, this is just this is what we call the Demogans, the Demogans law. These are the Demogans law. Gans law. Law. Okay? So these are known as the Demogans law. And if you check part of your if you check your option, which of your option is true here? I think option B A is wrong. Option B is the correct option here because we have intersection here and we have a union here. If you check this, you can see that there's an intersection here, there's an intersection here, there's a union here, there's a union here. That means it's wrong. This is wrong and this is obviously wrong. So the correct option here is what option? Option C. Let's just go ahead to the next question. In this question, it said express the complex number 2 plus 3i in polar form. Okay, here you recall that if you have my z to be equal to a plus bi, okay, where your a and b belongs to a set of real numbers, where your a and b is a member of is a member of R. Your modulus of Z is what the square root of A square plus B square and the argument theta is what is actant of B over A. Okay? Now you have to be careful of this your A and B. Alright so now here we notice that my a is what positive if you should plot this you can see that my a is positive and my b is also positive so i have this to be 2 comma 3 so i have something here so that means i wouldn't have problem with my angle i can just calculate this directly so here we have this to be our theta and this is our modulus of what our modulus of z so because this should be in polar form okay so to convert this to polar form, we need to calculate the value of our z, which is what square root of, which is what square root of two square plus what three square, which is square root of thirteen. And what is our theta? Our theta is what arctan of three over two. 
which will give us the numerical value of this will give us 3.6 and the numerical value of this will give us so if I press actan of 3 over 2 this will give me what's 556.31 degree so meaning that my z in polar form can be written as the magnitude which is what 3.6 open brackets cos 56.31 degree plus i sine 56.31 degree so the correct option to this question is what option option b so let's just go ahead to the next question in this question it said let f be a map that takes in x in this question it said let f be a map from x to x plus 1 or divided by x plus 2 be a function defined on the set of real numbers excluding 2 we asked to determine the inverse of the function all right so for us to determine the inverse of the function here we are given f of x to be equals to x plus 1 over x minus 2. Now here is the trick. For us to find the inverse of a function, we let y be equals to x plus 1 over x minus 2. And here, we now make x the subject of formula. And for us to do that, we just cross multiply. That means that we are going to have this to be x, y multiplied by x minus 2 to be equals to x plus 1. Okay? And if we expand this, that means we have x, y minus 2y to be equals to x plus 1. If I bring x to the other side and minus 2y to the other side, that means I'm going to have xy minus x to be equal to 1 plus 2y. And here, x is common. That means we have x open brackets y minus 1 to be equal to 1 plus 2y. And dividing both sides by y minus 1, that means that x is equal to 1 plus 2y all divided by y minus 1. That means that the inverse of x is going to be what? It's going to be 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. That means we just need to replace our y with x back for us to find the inverse of the function. So meaning that the correct option to this question is option, option C. So let's go ahead to the next question. In this question, it said obtain the range values of for which absolute value of 2x minus 3 to be less than 5. Now, anytime you are given an absolute value problem, the very first thing you want to do is that you want to remove that absolute value sign. And yeah, there are tricks in which we can use to uh, remove the absolute value sign. One of them is that if you have the absolute value of A to be less than the absolute value of B, the absolute value of A to be less than the absolute value of B implies that minus B, minus B is strictly less than A and it's also strictly less than what's B, okay? So if I apply that principle here, meaning I'm going to have this to be minus 5 to be strictly less than 2x minus 3 and it's strictly less than what 5. So if I had 3 to both sides of the equation, if I had 3 all true, that means I'm going to have minus 5 plus 3 to be less than 2x minus 3 plus 3 to be less than 5 plus 3. Okay, so that means I'm going to have this to be what's minus 2, which is strictly less than 2x, which is strictly less than 8. And if I multiply all through by 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2, so that means I'm going to have this to be what's minus 1, to be strictly less than x, which is strictly less than 4. So that means the correct answer to this question is what's option A. So let's just go ahead to the next question. In this question, it said find the constant term in the binomial expansion of 2x plus 1 over x, everything always to the power of 8. Now, when it say constant term, what does, those, what does constant term mean? That means that the term that contains x raised to the power of what's 0. So that's the meaning of our constant term. Now, here, if we want to find the constant term, there are two ways. Is either you start expanding it or you use the idea of the binomial expansion okay now even if you want to expand this, this is going to take a whole lot of time 
I think the best way to just go about it is just to use the idea or the theorems under the binary expansion, which says that suppose I have my a plus b to be raised to the power of n. Of course, we know that this is actually equals to the summation of um, r starting from 0 to n of n combination r a raised to the power of n minus r b raised to the power r. Okay, and you know that if I should expand a plus b raised to the power n, this is going to give me n plus 1 times. Okay, if I should expand a plus b raised to the power 2, this will give me something like this a squared plus 2ab plus b square. Of course, if you count the number of terms here, this is actually what 3 because this is 1, this is 1, this is the other one. So, meaning that if you have a plus b raised to the power n, this is going to give us what r plus 1 terms. Okay, this is going to give us r plus 1 terms. Okay. And we can determine that by it's going to give us n plus one terms rather. So and the r plus one term is given as what is given as n combination r multiplied by a raised to the power n minus r b raised to the power r. Okay. You can easily determine this by the time I should expand this binary expansion. You know that I'll be having something like n combination zero a raised to the power n, then b raised to the power zero plus n combination one a raised to the power n minus 1, b raised to the power 1, up towards n combination n, a raised to the power 0, b raised to the power what? b raised to the power of n, okay? Now, if you should count the number of terms here, the number of terms here is actually what? n plus 1. I've said that before. And the first term here is actually when your r is 0. The second term here is when your r is equal to 1. So that means my r plus 1 term will just give me what n combination r a raised to the power of n minus r b raised to the power of r okay i think that is what clear enough now okay that's just that now here we want to determine the constant term and for us to determine the constant term we need to first find the term that contains x raised to the power 0 okay so here in this case we have our n to be equal to what 8 we have our a to be equal to 2x and we have our b to be equal to 1 over x so that means the term that contains r is power 0 we don't know that yet but we can determine it with this formula which is what 8 combination r a raised to the power that's 2x raised to the power 8 minus r then what's my b that's what my b is 1 over x raised to the power what's r in which i can write this as what 8 combination r 2 raised to the power of, from your law of indices 2 raised to the power 8 minus r x raised to the power 8 minus r and here this can still be written as what x raised to the power of minus r in which i can write as what 8 combination r 2 raised to the power 8 minus r then here we have this to be x raised to the power of 8 minus 2r from your law of indices now you can see the trick here the trick here is actually just to bring my variables together to be what well, just like one term here and the idea is that we want to make we want to make want to have x raised to the power 8 minus 2r to be equal to x raised to the power 0 so we are it's like we are saying that we, are, we want x minus 2r to be equal to 0 meaning that my r is what my r is 4 okay so if my r is 4 that means the fifth term would produce what x raised to the power 0 so fifth term which is what t r plus one okay t four plus one rather t four plus one from this idea so that is the fifth term which is treated as the term r of the four plus one okay just like by replacing your r with four here would give me what eight combination four multiplied by two raised to the power eight minus four then x raised to the power eight minus two into four okay Obviously, this will give us what x raised to the power 0. So that means that the term here would be what? As the fifth term would be what? Its combination 4, which is 70, multiplied by 2 raised to the power 4, which is 16, then x raised to the power 0. So this is 70 times 16 times x raised to the power 0, which will give me what? Okay. So let me use my calculator here. Let me use my calculator. So here we have 70 times. Oh, I won't have it here. So 70 times 16 is what? 1120. 1120. So which is our correct option? So the correct option to this question is what? Option. Option B. 
So let's just move ahead to the next question. In this question, they said the end coordinates of the diameter of a circle are 3,2 and 9,6. We have to formulate the equation of the circle. Now, there are two ways in which you can go about this. Is that we go through the easy method or we go through the hard method? And what's the hard method? Now, suppose you have a circle. Okay, and let's say this is diameter. Okay, here we are given the end diameter to be 3,2 and this to be 9,6. Okay, now you can actually find the coordinates of the midpoint here. And after that, you can now use uh, the equation of a circle x minus a all square plus y minus b all square to be equal to r square. Of course, you need to calculate the distance between the coordinates of the center here and the points here. Okay. And for you to form, for you to calculate the coordinates of the midpoint, the coordinates of the midpoint is just given as x plus x x one plus x two divided by two, comma y one plus y two divided by two. Then after that, you can now use the, uh, you can now find the distance between these two points using the formula r to be equal to the square root of x one minus x two all square plus y one minus y two all square to find the radius okay that one is actually the uh, that one is actually a long method okay another way for you to go about this is just to use the formula directly okay now the formula for finding the equation of a circle given its endpoint is given as what is given as let me write that with a red marker it's given as x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2 plus y minus y1 multiply by y minus y2 then you just simply equate it to zero now here we are given our x1 to be so here we have x minus x1 our x1 is 3 then y minus y1 our y1 here is our x2 here is what 9 then plus y minus y1 which is 2 comma uh, multiply by y minus 6 okay to be equal to zero and if we expand this that means we are going to have this to be x squared minus 12x plus 27 plus y squared minus 12y plus sorry this should be 8 because minus 2 minus 6 will give us minus 8 so this should be minus 8 then plus 12 to be equal to 0 and here we are going to have this to be x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 8y then here 27 plus 12 will give us plus 39 to be equal to 0 so the correct option to this question is what option option c so let's just go ahead to the next question in this question we have to simplify log 8 to be 7 multiplied by log 7 to be 6 divided by log 5 to be 6 multiplied by log 5 to be 8 of course you can write this as log 8 to be 7 multiplied by log 7 to be 6 multiplied by 1 over from your from the idea of board mass so here we have this to be 1 over log 6 to be 5 okay sorry this should be 5 to be 6 5 to be 6 so it should still be 5 to be 6 because we are just changing this to multiplication so this should be 5 to be 6 multiplied by log 5 to be 8 okay now you recall that from your idea of change of base that if you have log b to base a this is still the same thing as what 1 over log a to base b okay now if i apply the same principle here that means i'm going to have this two so we are going to have this to be log 8 to be 7 multiplied by log 7 to be 6 okay multiply by what this should, will not change this to what log now here we have 1 over 5 to be 6 it's still the same as what log 6 to be 5 then we now have this to be what multiply by log 5 to be 8 now I hope this is clear just from this rule here another thing I want you to remember is that if you have log a to base b 
multiply by log b to be c this is still the same thing as what log a to be c okay so here what i'm saying here in essence is that this can still be written as what this can still be written as that is if i multiply this and this together i'm going to have this to be what log 8 to be 6 now i'll be left with what i'll be left with log um, 6 to be 5 then multiplied by log 5 to be 8 so meaning that here again i'm going to have this and this to be what log if i multiply this and this together i'm going to have this using this property here okay i'm going to have this to be what log 8 to base 5 8 to base 5 since i have this to be 6 and also this to be 6 multiplied by what last number here which is what log 5 to base 8 and here again i have 5 and 5 so that means this will just be what um, log 8 to base 8 and log 8 to base 8 is what is 1 so the correct option to this question is what is option a so let's move on to the next question. In this question, we are asked to obtain the equation of a straight line joining the points minus 2, comma 3 and 1, comma 4. Okay? Now here, um, you have to recall that, you can recall that the equation of a straight line passing through two points is given as what? Y minus Y1. Okay? The equation of a straight line passing through po two points is given as y minus y1 over x minus x1 to be equal to what y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so here let's say this is our x1 and this is our y1 this is our x2 and we have this to be what y2 so meaning that we are going to have this to be what y minus y1 over x minus x1 to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so that means this is going to give us what 1 over 3 and if we cross multiply that means we're going to have this to be what 3 multiplied by y minus 3 to be equal to what x plus 2 and we can have this to be what 3y minus what 9 to be equal to x plus 2 and if i collect like times that means i'm going to have 3y minus x minus 11 to be equal to 0 so that means that the correct option to this question is what's option option D. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next question. In this question, they ask us to derive the solution to of the equation. So here we are given cos cot theta plus tan theta to be equal to two cosec theta cosec theta. Now you know that cot theta itself is what cos 1 over tan tan theta plus now here we have this to be tan theta to be equal to 2 multiplied by now what's our cos theta cosec theta rather our cosec theta is just 1 over sine theta and now if i multiply each of this tan, this tan by by tan theta okay so if i multiply this by tan theta and i multiply this by tan theta and I also multiply this by tan theta. So what am I going to have? That means I'm going to have this to be 1 plus tan squared theta to be equal to 2 multiplied by. Now, don't forget that your tan theta is what? You see the same thing as what? Sine theta over cos theta. Okay? So I'm trying to write it. This is the same as what? Sine theta over cos theta. And that means that sine will cancel sine. Then I'll be left with what? 1 over cos theta. I was 1 over cos theta. 1 over cos theta is what? Sec theta. And what is 1 plus tan square theta? 1 plus tan square theta is still the same thing as what? Sec square theta to be equal to 2 sec theta. So meaning that sec will cancel one of its sec. That means I'm going to have this to be. Of course, I'm not meant to do that actually. But if I bring 2 to the other side, that means I'm going to have this to be what? Sec square theta minus 2 sec theta to be equal to 0. I don't want to do that because this is of power 2. So that means I need to have two answers. If I divide both sides, I will just have one answer. 
which is not really uh which is not mathematically uh correct okay just to have one answer when you are meant to have two answers so here we have this to be sec theta if you collect like times that means or if you factorize sec theta that means i'm going to have this to what sec theta multiply by sec theta minus two to be equal to zero that means i'm going to have this to what sec theta to be equal to zero or i have sec theta to be equal to two okay and here what is sec theta the sec theta is what one over cos theta to be equal to zero of course this itself like this because we want to look for theta we have one over cos theta to be equal to zero if i cross multiply i'm going to have one to be equal to zero which is absurd this is absurd so i'm not going to talk about this equation this equation has no solution okay I'll just deal with the second equation. So what is sec theta? Sec theta is what? 1 over cos theta to be cos to 2. So meaning that if I cross multiply, that means my cos theta will be what? 1 over 2. And what is uh, r cos of half? r cos of half is just what? Is what? 60 degree, which is still the same thing as what? Pi over 3 when you convert it to radian. So the correct answer to this question is what? option option b so let's move on to the next question in this question we asked to formulate a polynomial whose quotient and remainder when divided by x plus 1 are x squared plus 3x minus 2 and minus 3 respectively okay now what i want to say is this here is the thing the polynomial itself is given as what the quotient times divisor plus remainder okay so you have to take note of this uh, formula that your polynomial is your quotient which is x because we are looking for the polynomial which is x squared plus 3x minus 2 multiplied by my divisor which is x plus 1 plus my remainder which is what minus 3 okay now if i expand this that means i'm going to have this to be what x cube plus 3x square then minus 2x then here multiplying this by 1 I will have this to be what x square plus 3x minus 2 then minus this 3 and if I should uh, uh, add the like times together I'm going to have this to be x cube plus x 3x square plus x square that will be what 4x square then minus 2x plus 3x that's what plus x and minus 5 so this is my polynomial which is um which is so the correct option to this question is option option c okay so let's move on to the next question in this question say two matrices are defined as a to be this and b to be this element now they said if a transpose is equal to 2b if a transpose here we are given a to be this now what's our a transpose our a transpose is what so all the rows here will become the columns all the rows here will become the columns and here we have this to be 4 y 2 all the rows here will become the columns here that's what minus 4 minus 2 and minus 6 and here we have this to be 10 8 2 okay so if all the rows becomes column is equal to 2 times b so here 2 times b means that we are just going to multiply each of the elements here by what 2 that means we are going to have this to be 6 4 2 minus 4 minus 2 minus 6 10 4x and uh, and 2 okay so we have that now if this is equal to this and you know that two matrices are said to be equal if the elements are what if the position of the elements are what are equal meaning that sorry this should be six meaning that if these are equal then that means that y must be equal to what four and uh eight must be equal to what four x so here we have x to be equal to what two so we have our x to be two and we have x y to be what four now we ask to evaluate two x plus y so meaning that this is going to give us what two open brackets x which is two plus what 
4 which is what 4 plus 4 which is just what 8 so that means the correct option to this question is what option C and the last question said a binary repression cycle times is defined on a set of real numbers such that x is not 0 and y is not also 0 in what in R okay so we are given the binary we are given the rule to be this we are asked to evaluate what 1 cycle times steady okay this is just the binary operation and this is the rule so here anywhere we see one we replace our x with one and we are going to replace our y with what three okay so x is taking the position of one and y is also taking the position of what three okay so meaning that here we're going to have this to be um we're going to have this to be three multiplied by 1 raised to the power 3 plus 4 multiplied by 3 divided by 5 times 1 times 3 which is what 3 plus 12 divided by 15 which is 15 divided by 15 which is which is going to give me what 1 so the correct option to this question is what's option D so let's move on to the next question in this question it said if the limit at which x tends to c of f of y f of x is equals to l and the limit at which x tends to c of f of x is equals to m then obviously l is equals to is going to be equals to m okay because the limit of this function is tending to l and the limit of this function is tending to m that means my l still isn't as my m so the correct option here is what c here they said write the order and the degree of a differential equation the order and the degree of a differential equation now if i may ask you what do you understand by the order of a differential equation the order of a differential equation let me just write that down here we have the order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative of the highest order okay now if you should look at this differential equation now what is the highest order the highest order is just two because the highest derivative here is just what raised to power 2 here we are having the 2y over the dx square that means the highest derivative here is just what the square y over dx square that is which that is what that is the order because it is the highest derivative okay now what is the degree of this differential equation the degree of the of a differential equation is the degree of the highest order occurring in it now since the highest order is just the square y over dx square what is the power of this it's just like when we have like x square plus y uh, plus x plus uh plus one okay the order of this polynomial is just what it's just of order two because the highest the highest power is just two okay now what is the degree of this uh differential equation the degree of this differential equation is what it's just one because the highest order here is what the highest order here is the square y over the x square and the power here is just one so that means it has order two because of the fact that i'm having the square y over the x square and degree one because the power of that order is just what is just one so the correct option here is what d okay so let's move on to the next question here in this question it said if f of x is given as three is x minus one three raised to the power x minus one so we have to find f of x plus three minus f of x of course what is f of x plus three that is if we replace x with x plus three that means we are going to have this to be what x plus three minus one minus now what is my f of x my f of x is what three raised to the power x minus one now if i play a little bit with the loss of indices I'm going to have this to be what, 3 raised to the power of x minus 1 plus 3 then minus 3 raised to the power x minus 1 I just swap this okay so that means I'm going to have this to be what, 3 raised to the power of what x minus 1 multiplied by what 3 raised to the power of 3 from your law of indices this will still come back to this then I'll have this to be what 3 raised to the power x minus 1 again I can factorize 3 raised, 3 raised to the power x minus 1 that means I'm going to have this to be what 3 raised raised to the power 3 multiplied by 3 raised to the power of x minus 1 okay so here I should have this to be 
3 is the power of okay so this one should have been so that means i will have this to be 27 3 raised to the power x minus 1 minus 3 raised to the power of x minus 1 so this should give me 26 multiplied by 3 raised to the power x minus 1 so which is 3 times 26 times f of x so the correct option to this question is not there okay so this question has no answer okay so let's move on to the next question in this question it said express the square y over the x square in terms of y alone in the equation x square plus y square to be equal to r square okay where your r is constant now here we are given x square plus y square to be equal to r square now if i differentiate each term here with respect to x that means i'm going to have d dx of x square plus d dx of y square then to be equal to d dx of r square okay so meaning that if we differentiate this that means with respect to x that means we have this to be what 2x plus if we differentiate this with respect to y that means we are going to have using implicit differentiation that means we are going to have this to be what 2y multiplied by the y dx okay then to be equal to the since this one is a constant that means we are going to have this to be zero meaning that my dy dx is going to be what meaning that if you bring 2y to the other side that means i'm going to have this to be what minus 2x then divide by what divide by 2y so that means this will be what minus x over y to be equal to the y dx now again if i differentiate both sides here with respect to x that means i have the dx of the y dx which is simply the square y over the x square to be equal to the dx of minus x over y okay so now here that means i'm going to have the square y over dx square is going to be what now if i should use my quotient rule now don't forget that if when you are using your quotient rule and you are differentiating with respect to y you multiply by the y dx okay so meaning that here we're going to have this to be what y multiplied by differentiate minus x that means i'm going to have this to be what minus one then minus numerator that's what minus x multiplied by the differential of the denominator which is what the y dx then all divided by y square okay and now i can have this to be what i'm going to have this to be minus y over y square then minus times minus will give me what plus plus x then what is my dy my dy dx my dy dx from here is what minus x over y then all divided by what y square okay because i'm splitting this into two just like when you have a over b a plus b a plus b over c okay you can write this as what a over c plus b over c so that's what i'm doing so i can write this as minus y over y square then what i have here divided by y square okay so that means i'm going to have this to be minus 1 over y then plus now here this should be minus because uh, i have minus plus times minus which is what minus okay so i have this to be what minus x square over y cube okay because this y will multiply this y square so i have this to be y cube and from here if i should make x square the subject of formula that means i'm going to have this to be x square is going to be what r square minus y square okay so if i should substitute it here don't forget that this is still d square y over dx square and if i should substitute it directly into that i'm going to have this to be what minus one over y minus minus what so this is r square minus y square over y raised to power three and which you give us what which is still the same thing as what let me just write it out because if you use minus to open this bracket i'm going to have i'm going to have the square y over the x square to be equal to if i use minus to multiply this i'm going to have this to be what y square minus r square over y cube then minus one over y 
from here so that means the correct option to this question is what option option a so let's move on to the next question in this question it said determine the y date x where x is equals to a open bracket 1 plus sin theta and y is equals to a open bracket 1 minus cos theta okay now for us to determine the y dx now you can you know that my using chain rule the y dx can be written as the y the theta multiplied by the theta dx okay now from here we are given x to be equals to a open bracket 1 plus sin theta that means my that what my dx the theta is going to give us what a cos cos theta and my dy the theta is going to give me what a now if we differentiate minus cos theta that will give us what sin theta so that means we have this what multiplied by a sin theta now here we can write this one as what my dy dx to be equals to dy the theta multiplied by 1 over the theta dx so which will give us a cos theta because uh, sorry this should be a sin theta this should be a sin theta a sin theta multiplied by 1 over the the, the x the theta this should be the x the theta this should have been the x the theta the x the theta okay so that's a over a sin theta over a cos theta so which will give me what tan tan theta okay let's move on to the next question in this question it said determine the value of the integral of the integral of what dx over x from minus 2 to minus 1 now if you integrate 1 over x with respect to x we are going to have this to be what lean lean x okay where the lower limit is what minus 2 and the upper limit is what minus 1 so that means we are going to have this to be what lean minus 1 minus lean of what minus 2 so which will give us lean minus 1 over minus 2 which is still the same thing as what lean 1 over 2 so the correct option to this question is what is b in this question it said let f be equals to x minus 1 when x is less than 1 and x squared plus k when x is greater or equals to 1 find the value of k for which f of x is continuous at x equals 1 now here we are given our f of x to be a piecewise function that is x minus 1 when x is less than 1 and x squared plus k when x is greater or equals to 1 now f of x is continuous at 1 okay f of x is continuous at x equals to 1 if the limit at which x tend to 1 from the left okay is same as the limit at which x tends to 1 from the right and if it gives you f of x then that means that the function is continuous at 1 now the question is that what is the limit at which x tends to 1 from the left okay this is still the same as the limit at which x tends to 1 now from the left is when this is look at this uh this range here we have x less than 1 okay if you should look at this range now on your number line if this is 1 okay if x is tending to 1 from the left that means that what x will be less than 1 and if x is tending to 1 from the right that means that what x is greater than 1 okay that means 1 is less than x okay or x is greater than 1 so that means that what if x is less than 1 that means we are referring to this what this equation here so that means we are picking this equation here that's what x minus 1 when x the limit as as the limit of as this limit is tending to 1 which will give me what 0 and here the limit at which x tends to 1 from the right hand side or from the right of f of x is what the limit at which x tends to what 1 of which equation am i going to use of this equation because x is greater than 1 or x is greater or equals to 1 so i'll pick this equation that means i have x squared plus k 
which is what k plus one because one square is still going to give me what one so that means this is going to be what k plus one now lastly what's my f of x okay or let's just say x, this should be f of one this should give us f of one not just f of x this should have been f of one so this is f of one so what's my f of one rather so my f of one is just what that's when x equals to one so that means i have this to be what x square that's one square which is still one one square plus k which is k this is just one plus k okay or k plus one or k plus one so here we have k plus one to be equals to of course this and this are the same thing so i can just pick in one of them so i have k plus one to be equals to zero so that means that what my k is what minus one so the correct option to this question is what option c so let's move on to the next question in this question it said find the y dx if y is equal to lin sine x so here we are given y to be equal to lin of sine x now what to be our dy dx our dy dx is what we are going to differentiate sine x with respect to x then we divide it by what sine x now what is our sine x differential of sine x that's what cos x divided by sine sine x which will give us cos x so the correct option to this question is what option b here we asked to solve the differential equation the y dx to be minus x y cube to be equal to zero here we can just uh, bring this to the other side that means we have this to be what the y dx to be equal to x y cube and we can use the idea of variable separable that is we can separate this into what the y over y cube to be equal to x dx and if we integrate both sides we are going to have this to be what if you integrate the y if you integrate one over y cube with respect to y you're going to have this to be y raised to the power of what minus 3 plus 1 over minus 3 plus 1 to be equals to x square over 2 plus c and here we can now have this to be what minus 1 over 2y square minus x square over 2 to be equal to c that is if i bring this to the other side that means i'm going to have x square minus x square over 2 to be equal to c or we can rewrite this as what x square over 2 minus 1 over 2y square to be equal to c so that means the correct option to this question is what option c so let's just move on to the next question in this question we have to differentiate y equals to e raised to the power 2x cos x using product rule now you recall that if you have y to be equals to uv and that means my dy dx is going to be what u dv dx plus v du dx so this is just your product rule i believe we all remember this now here we are given y to be equals to e raised to the power 2x cos cos x Meaning that if we let our u to be equal to e raised to power x and our e raised to power 2x and our v to be equal to cos x, that means that my dy dx is going to give me u, which is e raised to power x, e raised to power 2x rather, differentiate u, v, differentiate cos x with respect to x, that means I'm going to have this to be minus sign x, then plus v, which is what cos x. Then differentiate u with respect to x that means i will have this to be what 2 e raised to power 2x okay so then if i simplify this i'm going to have this to be what e raised to power 2x e raised to power 2x because they are common and i'll be left with what 2 cos x minus sine minus sine x so the correct option to this question is what option option b okay so let's move on to the next question here we are asked to integrate 4 raised to power x with respect to x now you recall that any number a okay can be written as what e raised to the power of lin of what lin of a okay so meaning that any number 4 raised to the power x can be written as what e raised to the power of what lin of 4 raised to the power x okay meaning that we can write this as what 
and the graph. Here is the power of what x ln ln 4 dx. And if you integrate here is power x ln 4. Ln 4 is just like a constant of your it's just like a constant. So that means we are going to have this to be what e raised to the power x ln 4 divided by ln 4. Okay. Now because if you differentiate x ln 4, you are going to have it to be what ln 4. So we're just going to divide it by the differential. Okay. Then plus our arbitrary constant c. Then meaning that so the, I mean I think the correct option should just be the correct option here is what so meaning that we can write this as what e raised to power x ln 4 can still be written as what 4 raised to power x over what ln ln 4 plus c. So the correct option here is what option b. So let's move on to the next question. In this question, we asked to integrate cos x all divided by 1 plus sine square x. Now here we have the integral of cos x over 1 plus sine square x dx. Okay. Now here if we let our u to be equal to sine x. So that means that what my du will be what cos x dx. So meaning that this integral can be written as what as what? This can be written as what the integral of now cos x multiplied by dx is what du all divided by what one plus now what's my sine sine x so the, which is still what u square okay because our sine x is already u so that means sine square x will be what u square and if you should integrate this this will give us what actan of what actan of u and now if I substitute my u back there, that means my integral is going to give me what actan of sine x plus what plus c. Okay, because of the arbitrary constant. So the correct option to this question is what? Option A. E. In this question, we asked to evaluate the integral of this rational expression. Now, what I want you to remember is that if you have the integral of the derivative of a function, divided by the function with respect to x, the answer is just ln of that what of the denominator. Now what I'm saying in essence is that if you should look at this expression here, if I differentiate x cube minus x square plus 4x minus 18, okay, with respect to x, I'm going to have 3x square minus 2x plus 4. You can start have the numerator. So that means the answer to this question is just the ln of the denominator which is x cube minus 2 minus x square plus 4x minus 18 so in which the correct option here is what option b here we asked to evaluate question 20, 28 we want to evaluate the limit at which x tends to 0 of e raised to power minus e raised to power x minus e raised to power minus x divided by x by direct substitution, that is if you substitute 0 into this function, we are going to have 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 divided by 0. That's like intermediate form. However, anytime we have like intermediate form, what we need to do is just to apply the L orbital's rule. That is, this can be written as the limit at which x tends to 0 of d dx of the numerator divided by d dx of the denominator which is what one so meaning that we are going to have this to be limit at which x tends to zero if we differentiate this we are going to have this to be e raised to power x if we differentiate e raised to power minus x we are going to have this to be plus e raised to power minus x divided by what divided by one because if we differentiate x we are going to have it to be one now if you substitute 0 here, we're going to have this to be what? 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which is what? 1 plus 1 divided by 1, rather, which is what? 1 plus 1 is 2 divided by 1, which is what? 2. So the correct option to this question is what? Option D. So let's just move on to the next question. In this question, they said, if vector f is said to be rotational, if correct answer to this question is d if the call of f is what zero question 30 said the basic 
type of friction that exists between two surfaces in contact are, are. Of course, if you have a flat surface, all right, and you place a box on this surface, the force preventing this box from sliding is known as your static friction. All right, and why the force? The maximum force required to break such resistance is known as your what? Your limiting friction. Okay, it's just like when you have a box on a table. This, the force preventing this box from sliding is known as your static friction and is noted by F of S. Okay, if I apply a force in this direction, let's call it a applied force. All right, the maximum force required to make this box to move is known as your limiting limiting uh, force and it's noted by what F max which is given as mu S times your normal force okay I think the correct option to this question is what option A let's move to the next question in this question it said a firefighter 50 meter from a burning building direct a stream of water from a fire hose at an angle of 30 degree above the horizontal. If the velocity of the stream is 40 meter per second, at what height will the stream of the water strike the building? So here we are taking our g to be 9.8 meter per second. Now, if you should look at this diagram, you will see the firefighter here, in which he projected the hose here at an angle of 30 degree. And the initial velocity here is what? Of the stream is what? 40 meter per seconds okay now you recall that from the idea of um, one dimensional equation of motion okay taking this to be our positive x direction the position of any particle moving along this uh, x direction is given as what the initial position plus your initial velocity multiplied by your time then plus half of your acceleration t square okay now in this case because this is a problem of two dimension all right so that means we need to consider the x component and also the y component now let's look at the x component component okay now for the x component that means the x of t the position the position of this stream at any particular time the x position here is given as what the initial position of course now let's try to draw the coordinate axis of this of this uh, of this firefighter you see that the initial position here is zero so that means this should be what this should be zero okay and why the initial velocity now if I try to resolve the initial velocity to the X component that will give me what that will be give me V naught cos cos theta okay then now what to be my acceleration in the S component my acceleration in the S component will be what? The acceleration in the S component will just be will just be zero since the velocity of the of the water is what is constant. Okay? Since the velocity of the water is constant, that means the acceleration is what zero. Okay, in the S in the X direction. Okay. So now let's now talk about the Y component. For the Y component, for the Y component, that is the position of the particle the y component of the position of the particle at any particular time t would be given as what same thing the y the initial value of y here is also zero and if we try to resolve the velocity into y component this would be what v naught sine sine theta sorry i forgot to put my t here so there should be t here okay then don't forget that for this one so what would be the component of the acceleration in the y direction now if you to take a look at this problem you will see that for the y component gravity is acting in the what in the negative direction because if we take this to be our positive this to be our positive of course if i am going in this direction that means my acceleration must be negative okay using this coordinate axis all right so that means i'm going to have this to be what minus half of g t square negative because of the fact that what i'm taking this as my what i'm taking this orientation that is if i'm going up 
that means it to be positive. If I'm going down, that means it is what negative. If I'm going in this right direction, that means it is positive. And if I'm going in the left direction, that means it is what negative. So that means that's how I have this to be what negative half of gt squared. Okay. So this tells this this x component and y component will give us at any particular time t. I can determine the position of this what of this particle, the position of this particle. Okay. So I can determine if I know the time. Okay, I can determine the position, the x value and the y value at any particular time t. All right. Now, if you take a look at this question, we are given that the firefighter is 50 meter away from the burning building. That is, our d is what distance from the firefighter and the burning building is what 50 meter. Meaning that if I should take if I should replace my x of t, all right, because I want to find the time for heat, okay? If I'm moving at with this initial velocity here, I want to know the time it will take for me to get to this position here. So meaning that using the x of t, that is, if I put my x of t to be 50, all right, so if I put my x of t to be 50, so I want to determine the time, okay, moving with an initial velocity of what what's my initial velocity my initial velocity here is what 40 meter per seconds all right multiply by cos cos theta that's cos 30 multiply by t okay so meaning that if i divide both side by 40 cos 30 40 cos 30 cos 30 so that means that what my t would simply be equal to what 50 over what 40 cos 30 which will give me what 5 over 2 root 3 5 over 2 root 3 okay so i hope that is clear enough now now this time t is the time it will take for it to get to this what to this position here now what is not the height since i know the time it will take to get to this position here what will now be the height my height is just my what my y value because for me to calculate the height i can just use this what formula here all right so if i substitute five over if i replace my time with five over two root three in this formula here i'll get what i'll get my height why because this formula here gives me the height of what gives me the height given any time t to give me the height of what of the velocity stream at any particular time so since i know the time it will take for me to get for it to get here that means that if i substitute that time then i can get the height of the what of this building okay the height at which it takes okay to get to this building or the height of this building rather so that means i'm going to have this to be v naught which is 40 cos of 40 sine 30 30 degree Multiply by my t, which is what 5 over 2 root 3 minus half of g, that's 9.8 t square. So what's my t? My t is just 5 over 2 root 3 all square. And by the time I use my calculator to uh, to evaluate this, so this should be sine sine 30. So by the time I use my calculator to evaluate this, what will I have? I'm going to have this to be 18.67. 18.67 or 18.7 rather so we have this to be 18.7 meter so the height of this building is what 18.7 meter so let's move on to the next question in this question it said a 15 kilogram block is pushed up a 35 degree inclined a friction force of 100 newton exists between the block and the inclined what minimum force f would be necessary to move the block up the inclined at a constant speed now here we are asked to take our graphics to be what 9.8 meter per second square now if you should look at this diagram here you see that you see the objects placed directly on the surface of this incline here at an angle 35 degree now let's try to consider all the forces acting on this object one of the forces acting on this object is what is the force due to gravity which acts directly vertically downward okay meaning that what meaning that the force due to gravity is what minus mg because we are taking t 
this direction to be what to be our negative okay the downward direction to be what our negative why the upward direction is will be our positive and if we should take the magnitude of this force the magnitude of this force will be what mg okay so meaning that our force due to gravity here will be what mass which is what 15 times our gravity is 9.8 which will give us what which will give us 147 newton okay now here yeah, this force we can resolve this into two components that is the force parallel to the surface and the force perpendicular to the surface okay so that means if we try to resolve it so here is the force parallel to the surface sorry the force perpendicular to the surface and here is the force parallel to the surface the force here is the force parallel to the surface here and how do we calculate the magnitude of the force parallel to the surface and the force perpendicular to the surface now from geometry it will be easy for you to see that this angle here is still the same as the angle here now many of you may not know why this angle here is still the same as this angle here but i'll try to, to just explain to you guys now if i try to complete this to be in form of a rectangle okay now you notice that this is actually a right angle triangle and the angle here will be what will be 90 minus 35 since you know that the sum of angles in a triangle is what is 180 degrees so meaning that this angle here will be what 90 minus 35 which will give us 55 degree so this is 55 degree okay so if this is 55 degree now don't forget that this this vector here is perpendicular to the surface so meaning that this one also will be what 90 degree okay now if you should notice this very well you will notice something that if i have if i have like two parallel sides of course this side here is parallel to this side here okay if i have two parallel sides and i have a transversal line across this line what do you notice you notice that this angle here will be the same thing as what this angle here so meaning that this uh, green angle here this green angle here and this green angle here are what are equal because corresponding angle are what or let's just say alternate angle are what are equal this angle here is alternate to this angle here so they must be equal or we can just say z angle are equal from our elementary school so that means this angle and this angle are equal now if this one is 55 degrees definitely this one will also be 55 degrees so if this one is 55 degrees that means that what this angle here will be what 90 minus 55 degree which will give us what 35 so this angle here is 35 degrees so i hope we all understand why this is what 35 degree so that one is just by the way now let's just continue with our with the problem so let me try to rub this off okay now in the question they said we should do what now let's try to calculate the magnitude of the force parallel to the surface to the surface and the magnitude of the force perpendicular to the surface i think we're only interested in the force parallel to the surface so we are going to calculate that so the magnitude of the force parallel to the surface okay is given as what the magnitude of the force due to gravity multiplied by the sine of the angle theta of this sine theta so which is still the same thing as 147 multiplied by sine sine 35 and how do we even have this because even if we try to complete this side here let's try to complete this side as a vector now if you should look at this this side here the magnitude this side here is the magnitude of my force parallel to the surface and now if you should look at it from your idea of Sokatua here we are given opposites over the hypotenuse the hypotenuse here is just the magnitude this red line here this red vector here is the magnitude of the force due to gravity which is 147 newton okay and this force here so we are given this force here and we are given the we are given the opposite and we are also given the hypotenuse that means the ratio of it will be, will be what that's the sign of the angle between them which will give us by the time we cross multiply we're going to have this to be 
magnitude of the force parallel to the surface to be equal to the magnitude of the force due to gravity multiplied by the sine of the angle between them. So which will give us what? Which will give us, so we can just use our calculator to do that. But let's still leave that outside. Okay? So we are going to have this to 147 sine 35. Okay? Now, if you look at the question, it said a frictional force of 110 newton exists between the block and the inclined okay now what is the minimum force that to be required so that means if i'm to apply a force that to move move the block up if i'm to apply a force let's call it uh, fa if i'm to apply a force that will move this block upward that means that by the time i resolve my resolve my force in the y component by the time i resolve my force in the okay so this is my y component this so by the time i resolve it into the x component what am i going to have i'm going to have my applied force okay in this direction so i'm taking this orientation to be positive and i'm taking this to be what to be positive so that means if it's going down it will be negative and if it's going to the other direction it is what negative okay so that means this will be what this minus because the force here is acting to the opposite direction by the time i by the time i wanted to move it up that means that what that means that what the force here the the frictional force will be acting in this opposite direction all right the magnet the frictional force here will be acting in this opposite direction that means i'm going to have this to be the force applied minus the frictional force minus the force parallel to the surface so minus the force parallel to the surface must give me what must give me what zero okay because that is like the verge at which it will move so meaning that here we're going to have the applied force is going to give us what which is like the minimum force is going to give us the frictional force plus the force parallel to the what to the surface okay so we can just take this to be the magnitude you want to calculate the magnitude okay so the magnitude of the applied force is just simply what's our frictional force that's like 110 then plus 15 times um, 9.8 or let's just say 147 times sine 35 okay so let's use our calculator so let's see what we are going to have so here we have this to be uh, 110 plus, um, let's open a bracket. So here we have 15 times 9.8, 9.8, then times sine 35. So here we are going to have this to be what? 194 Newton. So this is what? 194 Newton. So the correct option to this question is what? option option d so let's move on to the next question in this question it said find r such that u and v are orthogonal so two vectors are said to be orthogonal if their dot product is what zero if their dot product is zero then u is what is orthogonal to what to v okay so meaning that here we are given u to be what eight minus two and two and we are given v to be what one five and r to be equal to zero by the time we expand this what are we going to have we are going to have this to be eight minus ten plus two r to be equal to zero that means we are going to have Two R to be equal to two, meaning that R is equal to one. So that means the correct option to this question is what option B. In this question, we are asked to find the moment of inertia of a solid sphere of what of two meter in diameter, and the mass is what five kg about an axis passing through the center. So the formula for calculating the moment of inertia of a, of a solid sphere in which uh, the axis is passing through the center is given as what 
2 over 5 m r square okay 2 over 5 m r square so here the m is the mass and r is the radius so here we have 2 over 5 the mass here is what 5 and the radius here is what of course if the diameter is 2 that means the radius will be what 1 so here we are going to have this to be 5 will cancel 5 here we are going to have this to be 2 kg meter square so the correct option to this question is what option a so let's move on to the next question in this question it said obtain the momentum of a body whose mass is 2 kg and velocity is 5 meter per seconds of course Momentum is given as what mass times the velocity. So here we have the mass to be 2 kg and we have the velocity to be 5 meter per second. So that means this is going to give us what 10 newton seconds. So the correct option to this question is what option C. In this question, it said the force generated from the engine of a car is found to be 300 newton. Calculate the power developed when the car moves with a constant speed of one, 10 meter per second. Of course, you know that power is what work over time. And uh, what's our work? Our work is force times our distance over time. Okay, we can write this as force times d over t, which is seen as what force times distance over time is our velocity. So meaning that here we're going to have this to be 300 newton times the velocity, which is 10. That's like 3000 watts. So the correct option to this question is what option C. In this question, they said a lift moves with an acceleration of 2 meters per second. Estimate the reaction of the flow on the object, on an object of mass 50 kg placed on the what, on the floor of the lift when it moves up. Now here we have like a lift system and we have like a body that is placed here. Of course, the normal reaction will act upward here, and the force due to gravity here will act downward here. And now they ask us to do what to estimate the reaction of the what of the floor of an object when the lift moves up. So if the lift moves up, what will happen? That means that well, we are going to have the normal reaction. So this will be equal to mass times your gravity then plus mass times your acceleration okay because this thing is accelerating upward so that means the normal reaction will just be the mass times your gravity then plus my mass times my acceleration okay so the, here we are going to have this to be what m open bracket g plus a here we are given m to be what 50 and we are given our gravity is here to be 10 plus our acceleration is 2 so that means we're going to have this to be 50 times 12 which is what 600 newton so the correct option to this question is what option option a question 38 they said given that a is equals to 2 comma 0 comma 3 okay so this is like your I component, J component, and your K component. And we are given B to be equals to 5 comma minus 1 comma 1. So we want to find A dot B. A dot B is simply what? So our A dot B will give us a scalar answer. So meaning that here we are going to have 2 times 5 which is 10. 0 times minus 1 is what? 0. Then 3 times 1 will give us 3 which will give us 13. And here we are asked to evaluate a dot b multiplied by c. So our a dot b is 13. So multiplying it by c will give us what 13 times. So our c is i plus j. So which will give us 13 i plus 13 j. So the correct option to this question is what option b. So let's go ahead to the next question. In this question, it said a body starts from rest and moves with a uniform acceleration to attain a velocity of 15 meter per second in 10 seconds evaluate its acceleration at that time all right so using the idea of v is equal to u plus 80 so 
we know that the initial velocity is zero that means our v is equal to what 80 so meaning that our acceleration is what the velocity over time so here we are given the velocity to be 15 meter per seconds and the time is 10 so that means the acceleration is what 1.5 meter per second square so the correct option to this question is a question 14 he said the data representation in which the bars are joined together is called histogram okay so the correct option to this question is c so you have a bar chart when the when there is no gap or when there is when there are gaps okay so that is when you have bar chart but when you have histogram is when the bars are joined together so that's the correct option then question 41 they said if 5 combination r is equal to 10 what is the value of r by inspection my r is 2 okay because 5 combination 2 is 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial 2 factorial so which should give me 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial and this will give me what 10 okay so by inspection the correct option is what b so let's move on to the next question in this question they said a problem of statistics is given to three students a b and c whose chances of solving it are 1 over 2 comma 3 over 4 and 1 over 4 to determine the prob probability that the problem will be solved okay for us to determine the probability that the problem will be solved first thing is that here we are given that the probability that a will solve the problem is what is 1 over 2 now what is the probability that a will not solve the problem probability that a will not solve the problem that's like a complements is what 1 minus probability that a will solve the problem which is still 1 over 2 here we are given probability that B will solve the problem is 3 over 4. The probability that B will not solve the problem will be 1 minus 3 over 4, which is 1 over 4. The probability that C will solve the problem is what? 1 over 4. The probability that C will not solve the problem is 3 over 4. That's 1 minus 1 over 4, which is 3 over 4. Now here we are asked to determine the probability that the problem will be solved. And since you know that the probability of success that is to be solved then plus probability of failure that is it will not be solved is what one so meaning that the probability that the problem will not be solved is what oh sorry the probability that the problem will be solved would give us one minus probability that the problem will not be solved okay now since a b and c are independent event that is the probability that none of them will be able to solve it is when all of them try it independently okay so that means this will give us one minus probability that uh, that a cannot solve it multiplied by the probability that b cannot solve it multiplied by the probability that c cannot solve it so this will give us one minus probability of three of them not be able to solve it is three over 32 which will give us 29 over 32 so the probability that they will be able to solve it is is what 1 minus probability that they won't be able to solve it which is what 29 over 32 so the correct option to this question is what is d in this question it said given that y is equal to ax plus b where x is a random variable we are asked to find the expected value of y and the variance of y Actually, the correct answer to this question is A, because it's in your textbook. So this correct option here is A. Question 44. They said, if the probability that an individual suffers a bad reaction, reaction from a certain injuries is 0 0.1. Okay, here we are given the probability to be 0 0.001. Okay, here we have to determine the probability that out of 200,000 200, individuals, exactly three will suffer the bad reaction. So here is a poison distribution. Okay, because we are given that the probability we are given the probability of success. Okay, which is 0 
one. Meaning that here, if we here our n is what our n is two thousand. So if we apply the Poisson distribution, that is the probability that x is equal to okay, the probability mass function of a Poisson distribution is given as what is given as e raised to the power minus lambda, then multiply by lambda raised to the power x over x factorial. Okay, so if x is equal to let's calculate our lambda first. Our lambda is NP, which is what? 2000 times 0 0.001, which will give us 2. So that means that probability that exactly 3 will suffer bad reaction is what? Is simply e raised to the power of minus lambda, that's e raised to the power minus 2, then multiply by 2 raised to the power 3 over 3 factorial. Now what would this give us? So let's try to use our, our calculator to calculate this. So here we have this to be e raised to the power lambda e raised to the power minus 2 multiplied by our lambda is actually 2 raised to the power 3 then divided by 3 factorial so the answer is what 0 0.18 0 0.18 so the correct option to this question is what option b here it said find the expected number of students admitted to a, to study medicine and surgery in a random sample of 100 students if the probability of securing the admission is what 0 0.2 so this is a binomial distribution and the expected value of the binomial distribution is what n multiplied by p which is 100 multiplied by 0 0.2 which is what 20 so the correct option to this question is what 20 so let's move on to the next question it said on a final examination of in mathematics the mean was 72 and the standard deviation was what the standard deviation was 15 so we have to calculate the standard score okay and you know that the standard score is given as what the part the point minus what minus your mean divided by your standard deviation okay so here what's our points so here we are supposed to determine the standard score of a student receiving 60 degree so here we have 60 minus my mean in that 72 divided by 15 so if we should press our calculator 60 minus 72 so 60 minus 72 divided by 15 so here is a zero point minus zero point minus zero point eight so here we have this to be minus zero point eight of course our answer is not part of the option so we can just leave leave the answer so since our answer is not part of the option so we just leave it like that question 47 which of the following is not a simple probability sampling technique okay so the correct option to this question is what is is d so we have simple sampling technique we have the stratified we have we have the systematic we have the clustered but we don't have quota, there's not like quota. So the correct option to this question is D. Question 49. It said obtain a linear regression equation of Y on X using the following information. So here we are given some some information. We have to obtain the linear regression. Now, if you have if you want to find the linear regression in this form AX plus B. Okay, sorry. So this should be a plus bx. So our a here is simply. So you need to know this formula in your head. So your a here is simply the summation of y multiplied by the summation of x square minus summation of x multiplied by summation of xy divided by n multiplied by summation of x square minus summation of x all square and our b is simply n summation of x y 
minus summation of x then multiply by summation of y divided by n multiply by summation of x square minus summation of x whole square and if we should substitute all these values here that means we are going to have our a to be equal to summation of x summation of y here is simply 24 multiplied by 165 minus 25 multiplied by 144 divided by 5 multiplied by 165 minus 25 all square which will give us what 1.8 you can try it with your calculator i'm just sure of that here then for b we have 5 multiplied by 144 minus 25 multiplied by 24 divided by 5 multiplied by 165 minus 25 all square which will give us 0 0.6 so that means the correct option to this question is what option b because my y is going to be what 1.8 plus 0 0.6 x in this question it said the following data regarding the height y and the weight x of a five college student are given below so we asked to calculate the correlation coefficient between the height and weight now if you are given two data points x and y the correlation coefficient is given as what n multiplied by summation of x y minus summation of x multiplied by summation of y divided by square root of n summation of x square minus summation of x all square multiplied by n summation of y square minus summation of y all square so which will give us what 5 multiplied by 165 minus 15 multiplied by 10 divided by um, square root of 5 multiplied by 325 then minus 15 square then multiply by 5 open brackets 125 okay that's summation y square summation y square is 125 then minus 10 square okay so this is going to give us what 0 0.78 and our answer is not part of the question so we do not we will not pick any option here since our answer is not part of the option so we will not pick any option and the last question for this tutorial series is this it said the sampling technique that allows the investigator to consciously or unconsciously pass judgments to influence the sample selection process is identified as what non-probability sampling so this is the correct option the correct option to this question is what non-probability sampling you can check it out from the material given to you i'm sure that this is the correct option all right thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video this is where i'm going to drop the cutting for today i wish you the very best in your exam thank you well we've come to the end of today's tutorial questions if you have any question any comment any suggestion you want us to know you can put them in the comment section box below and also don't forget to click on the like button so that more people can get to know about this and together let us defeat this academic failure thank you